All right. All right, what's up, y'all? Uh, how many people were in Theater A this morning when I was out there emceeing? We had a great time, and we made fun of Theater B all morning. Yeah. Great. No, Theater B is now my theater. Theater A is dead to me. All right. Now, what I want to give you today are four prompts and prompt strategies that you can use uh, to become independently wealthy. Uh, not really, but they will make your life a little bit better, I think. And you can use these not just for programming, but for um, uh, whatever else it is that you do. So we have here uh, Copilot, and we've got a couple of uh, modes for Copilot. Ask, edit, and agent. Uh, we've heard the word agent about 6 million times in the last 72 hours, so we're not going to do that at all. I'm just going to hang out in agent mode, and we're going to do a little prompting. Now, uh, oh, that's my timer. Oh, it's already a minute. It's already gone. All right, y'all, lock in. All right, so um, in this case, we have a project where I've kind of started to build something, but there's no structure, and it's like kind of looks like kind of a junk drawer. And so what I like to do is use something called the Q&A prompt, okay? And this is how it goes. Hey there, uh, how's it going? Listen up here. Um, I got this project over here that has like no structure. It's kind of a mess. And so I need like a recommended file or folder structure for this mug. And I need you to give that to me. But before you do that, could you please ask me five yes or no questions that will help you make a better recommendation? All right, now the first thing that I'll point out is that I don't type to Copilot, I talk to it. That's what you should do because you don't actually have to, you don't have to be articulate, right? You can literally just like, verbally vomit into the chat what you want, and it will pull out from that the context here. All right, so it says, are you building a web application or mobile application? Doesn't, doesn't know anything about our project right now, which is super not useful. So let's fix that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear the chat, and I'm going to do the up arrow to bring my prompt back. And this time, we're going to add in Codebase. And Codebase is going to allow it to search my project for the files and folders that I've got. And then it's going to come back and it's going to ask, are you, let's see, are you planning to follow a model view controller pattern? Uh, yes. Will you need to handle authentication? Yes. Do you plan to implement API endpoints? No. Will you use being automated tests? No. Not testing. Are you kidding me? Are you planning to include middleware? Yes, we are. And then let's see what we get back. Uh, oops. We will not do that. We will rerun without that. Let's try that again. All right, so based on that, it's going to give us a folder structure here, right? So it looks like it's recommending a config, controllers, middleware, models, routes, services, types, details. Like, I don't know about y'all, but I really struggle with this stuff, figuring out how to structure my project, right? Like, if the template doesn't tell me, I have a really hard time, and I always feel like I'm doing it wrong. So AI is really good at this. So now what we want to do is we actually want to implement this. And it can actually do that. It's actually given us the code to uh, create this. Now, I'm looking here. It looks like it's going to create the directories and the files. So it's not quite what I want. So let's vamp on this a little bit and be like, uh, totes my goats, that is a dope structure. There's nothing about it that I don't love. I love everything about it. Um, could you just give me a single script that will generate that structure? Don't create any of the files, though. I just want the folders, and then you can just move the existing files that I have into the right spots. Thanks. Now, you could use agent mode to do this, but in agent mode, agent mode doesn't delete files, right? It doesn't like to do that. It likes to create. It doesn't like to delete, and that's to to save you. And so if we're in ask mode, we can get a structure here. Um, so we get a, a script here, and then we can actually run this script and get it to uh, create our file and folder structure here. So let's see. Let's go ahead and add this into a new file. Let's see. Let's save it. What should we call it? Um, I don't know. We'll just call it script.sh. That's a great name. Uh, and then let's run it. Um, and I'm not even going to think about that. I'm just going to run script.sh, right? Why should I do it when it can do it? All right, let's run it. Permission denied. What? chmod. chmod. X? No. Uh, run script. Script.sh. Uh, give me perms. chmod or something. I don't know. Uh, there we go. That looks right. Run. Boom. Uh, nailed it. That's amazing. See, now, I like the scripts like that because it just gives you more control over what you're doing. I like, I want to see it before you do it. 
Don't do the thing, I'll see it first. So that's how I like to roll. Now, it didn't move the files that we had. We won't, uh, we won't get mad about that, uh, but it got close enough. So that's called the Q&A. Just ask the model to ask you some questions, like it's prompting you, and then you return the favorite. Now, let's do another one. Let's do the uh, pros and cons. For pros and cons, let's take a look at this file here. So this is our database connection file. It's very complex. Um, and what we want to do here is we want to make sure that we're only injecting this uh, one time into the application, right? So there's a lot of different ways to do that. In programming, there's never one right way to do anything, even though you read a lot of blog posts that tell you otherwise, there's not run one right way. You know this as developers, right? And so the model, though, is tuned to give you an answer. You ask a question, it gives you an answer, but it may not be the right answer. And so it's better if you try something like this. Sup, bro, I'm back. Yo, listen, new sitch here. What's going on is I got a database file and I want to just inject it once into the application. Like, I don't want to instantiate that mug every single time I use it. What is uh, the best way to do that? Actually, give me several options and give me the pros and cons of each. All right. So we're simply asking the model for all of the different ways that we could do this, because there's a lot of different ways. So it's telling us you can use the module level singleton, pros, cons, okay, classical singleton pattern. Uh, all right, that, I actually like this better um, because this is not, this is actually not a singleton, I don't believe. All right, so yeah, so in this case, what I would now do is I would flip over to, can I flip over to edit? I cannot. I can flip over to agent though, and I can say, Dope sauce. I like number two a whole lot. Why don't you go ahead and implement that? And then you're going to need to update the places in my project where this file is being used to make sure that everything is copacetic. Thank you, Go. All right. Y'all see how good speech recognition has gotten lately? Like, it's crazy. That's a local speech model that runs on your machine. So it's like snappy and fast. Uh, if you're not talking to AIs, you should be talking to AIs. It's a ton of fun. All right, I see the database is only being used in vehicle service. Yes, it's an oversimplified uh, thing we got here. So then it implements that. I like that. That's amazing. Um, oh, we're still working. I can't keep until it's done. And then it's going to update the vehicle service to use the correct database uh, implementation. All right, boom. Here we are. I love this. Look at this. I love this, right? And so just like that, we've sort of done this refactor that we really, really like. And we now have a singleton, and we're sure that it's only being used one time, so we're not newing this thing up multiple times. New is glue or something. I don't know. Steve Smith said that. All right, let's keep all this. Let's, um, well, let's leave this file open and do some more fun stuff. So the next thing we're going to do is clear out the chat. You should be clearing the chat like all the time, all the time. All, th there we go. So clear the chat. And you can see that I've got a file here. Right, I've got this uh, vehicle service file. So I'm actually going to come back to ask mode. Let's come back to ask. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to do a little bit of refactoring on this file. I want to refactor. But uh, the problem with models is that they genuinely, like when you refactor, it's, it's, there's usually a lot of steps. Like you're going back and forth with the model. It's like, I want to do this. And you're like, nah, not quite. Let's try this instead. And the problem is that refactors are usually multiple steps. And the next step depends on what you just previously did, right? And so the model tends to get confused. And so I want to teach you a trick to make the model not do that, right? And um, where's, is Matt Pocock in the audience? He came up with a name for this that we're not going to use. It's called the stepwise chain of thought. He had a different name. Find him, ask him. That was his idea. So this is what we're going to do. Uh, hey, listen, uh, I want to refactor this file. And um, what I want you to do is move one step at a time. So let's just move incrementally through this refactor. And do not move to the next step until I give you the keyword banana. All right, so now we're gonna get into this refactoring loop, right? So we're gonna refactor the code. Oh, look, we have a SQL injection vulnerability. Super, that's awesome. It's a great way to start, right? And then this change, right? And then it's looking at things, it wants to use a parameterized query. So here I might do something else, right? I might say like, 
ah, parameterized queries are kind of clunky. Is there some other way that we can do this? Should I be using an ORM or something? Right, because this is programming, you're investigating alternatives, you're doing things, you're going back and forth. Right, it recommends Prisma. Okay, very nice. First you need to install Prisma, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and so then maybe we do this or maybe we don't, right? It doesn't really matter. But what we can do from here is see it says, right? So we can just tell it. We can be like, banana. And it will just move directly on to the next step of the refactor without, oh, it wants to, let's start implementing Prisma, because I guess that's the next step. It's not going to let us move on until we implement Prisma. But you can use this stepwise. You always want to move in steps, let the model work incrementally, because a lot of times it just, you asked it to do something. So if you tell it to refactor something, it's going to be like, cool, I got you, and it's going to try to refactor the whole file in one shot. Don't do that. Move incrementally and use a keyword that you don't use normally in code. That's why I use banana, just because I don't think I've ever typed that word in code. Maybe you have. That's interesting. All right, last one. Um, this last one's called the role play. Let's pop the chat out. Did you know y'all know you can do this? Like you can get the chat out like this in the editor. Look at this, like full screen chat. Nice. So here's what we want to do. Um, models really, really, really like to role play. And what I mean by that is that if you tell them that they're good at something, they're just magically good at that thing. It's amazing. And that's why you always see in these prompts, they're like, you are a skilled software developer. They're not saying that just for fun, right? Like that is a key part of the thing actually working, which is crazy, but that's how it works. And so let's do this. You are the greatest instruction, instructor in the world. You're almost as good as James Montemagno. Not quite close, close to being as good as James Montemagno. And the reason you're so good is that you give your students creative exercises so that they can learn by doing. And your class is the most popular class in school. Everyone loves it. And today, you're teaching a class on regex. Go ahead and start the class, move one exercise at a time, and if the student gets the answer wrong, don't give them the answer, but go ahead and give them a suggestion that helps move them towards the correct answer. Uh, and so in this way, right, you can turn the AI sort of into anything that you want. So in this case, we're actually going to learn regex, which doesn't make a ton of sense because AI should be writing all regex now. But if we wanted to, right, we're here. Phone number detection, let's start, let's see. I want you to write a regex pattern. So let's see here, exactly three digits, then a hyphen, then I think this is just, right? Isn't that right? That looks like the test string itself, not a regex pattern. To create a right, we need to wrap it in a forward slash. For digits, use the slash D. So what is that, like this, and then this, and then this? I feel like this is a really hard first exercise. Should have said be, be more simple. We're getting closer. All right, so, but like with this, right, we could go through here, and we could actually learn anything that we want, right? So if we wanted to learn Rust, because we want to be super cool and we want people at parties to like us, we could do this right here in GitHub Copilot. So those are four prompt strategies. The Q&A prompt, the uh, pros and cons prompt, the stepwise chain of thought prompt, and finally, the role prompt. And remember, everyone is just one prompt away from being independently wealthy. So I appreciate you being here. Thank you very much. Go out, have a lot of fun with AI. Appreciate it.